my name is uh, Nora Bosong. I'm a German writer, and today I will talk a bit about becoming a writer, being a writer in Germany, uh, being a female writer in Germany, uh, and how everything started and about the difficulties I also had, because that uh, that is part that many people who see me right now being quite successful with several uh, novels here in Germany uh, don't see so much that it was not only an easy way to get there. Um, just right at the beginning, I was, uh, I was still a kid. I was reading a lot, writing a lot. When I was uh, about nine or 10, I started to write regularly um, stories, um, something that I called a novel when I was 10. I wouldn't call it a novel right now. <laughs> But uh, so I, I was really um, doing a lot. Uh, it was it was not just a hobby or so, but I did that every day. I didn't wait till I had some ideas or inspiration, but I really wrote every day. I went to my room, uh, closed the door, uh, didn't want it to be interrupted. Uh, and yeah, really wrote like like I imagined that writers would do that. So it was part of a playing being a writer and it was part already becoming a writer. I published my first novel in 2006. It was yeah, a very small novel about a patchwork family in uh, Southern Europe um, and about the difficulties uh, within this community. Uh, it was, I would say, um, a bit a test of writing skills. It was not so much plot driven. And in 2009, uh, I published the second novel, which was uh, telling a much more uh, historical uh, story about the German diplomat and the Second World War uh, who uh, worked in Italy. So and the fascist regime and about his difficulties after the Second World War. He was a kind of a resistance, um, not a hero. He was absolutely not a hero, but he he worked or he helped Jews to flee uh, Germany and Italy during uh, the Second World War. Uh, but that uh, didn't help him to get a new job after the Second World War, but made it even more difficult. Uh, so that was already a story that had a much larger impact uh, than my first little test in 2006. Um, just an impression, I was 24 when my first novel was published and 27 when the second one came out. And um, I think that for a lot of people who saw me from outside, it seemed that everything went very smooth, but that was not true. I had a lot of rejections also. Uh, I had letters from publishing houses who said, well, that's nice what you write and it's very poetic, but sorry, it's not uh, the literature we want to publish uh, because it's not uh, mainstream enough or not plot oriented enough or it's too abstract, whatever. Uh, It was just not the taste of uh, of these publishing houses. And my first novel was uh, didn't sell very good. Uh, it was uh, it got some nice reviews, but it was not that I was a famous famous author at that time. Uh, I think that some colleagues had a better start and a more easy start. Um, What I noticed at that time already was that there were still some differences between male writers and female writers. Uh, I wouldn't say that in every aspect it was easier for men to publish books because uh, there were also uh, publishing houses who liked to publish young, pretty women because they had some nice photos uh, to put on the back of the books. Uh, so. Uh, It might have had also uh, advantages to be a woman, but um, for example, to to uh, look at the money. Um, when I published my first book, I had to to make colleagues who uh, tried to get a good payment for their first novel, which is I would say 
quite okay because when you want to become a writer you want to um, to live from what you do and uh, I also had a female friend who tried the same and when people were talking about it it seemed that she was greedy because she wanted more and more money for the novel she had written and she spent two years to write it and the young man they were just uh, sporty and they were uh, self-confident so uh, you see it was not only that the publishing house said well uh, for a male writer we pay a lot for a female writer we don't pay a lot but uh, the 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 like it was different how other people saw it and it was a good thing for male writers and not so much a good thing for female writers I mean, I think that are kind of uh, prejudices or uh, ressentiments that are that go deep into the structure of uh, the society we do have in Germany. Germany likes a lot to talk about uh, equality between uh, gender, between uh, men and women. But I think in comparison to, for example, France, Great Britain or the US, other Western uh, countries, uh, we are way worse than we want to think we are. Um, and that is just a small example for it. Um, I wouldn't, as, as I said, I wouldn't say that it was only difficult for me and I, that it was only a disadvantage to be a woman. Uh, for example, for the second novel, I did a lot of research and uh, I met, for example, an old diplomat uh, with whom I uh, discussed the, the history of his uh, métier and he was, uh, he was really uh, flattered that I tr wanted to interview him and uh, he was impressed that a young woman uh, made such a job and choose such a topic to write about. But uh, on the same, on the other side, uh, it was seen or it was expected from other people that female writers write about only write about emotions, that they write about love stories or their emotional um, um, disorientation, uh, and not so much about politics uh, or about historical uh, topics. So uh, that was quite not unknown, but not expected so much. And for the third novel, for example, which took um, a company, a family company, uh, I went into the world of business. And that was even uh, more strange. And uh, it was not al always uh, simple to get interview partners because they just didn't take me serious. I can understand that they didn't take me serious because I'm not an economist, of course. I'm a writer and I studied culture science, uh, cultural studies and literature and philosophy. So of course, I don't know so as much about economy as someone who studied economy but they didn't take me serious because I was a young woman and that's the difference and that was a point where I got quite angry inside but um, well I had to stay polite because I wanted answers from them and not just uh, anger so um, I would say uh, that during my um, career as i would say it with all the successes and rejections uh, it was m more a disadvantage to be a woman also if you think about um, getting together career and family that's quite easy for uh, artists if they work for theater or for the music business or for uh, for the literature, it's quite easy to have family and the career. For women, it's still, at least in Germany, uh, it's still not as not that easy, because uh, there still is the idea that a woman who has children has to stay at home. Uh, of course, you can stay at home and still write a book, but if you take care of 
maybe two children, uh, you won't be as concentrated as uh, your write, writer and husband who goes to the library and has uh, a calm atmosphere and uh, can write his own novels. So I think that um, there's a lot of space uh, for changes still in, in Germany. And uh, at the moment, I see more uh, rollback, uh, especially uh, in the in the scene of well, left wing politics uh, who see themselves as progressive and feminist. Um, they show, a, in, in my point of view, a large uh, rollback, and uh, the idea of a feminist woman is. Why that would, for example, in the French Revolution, a woman should be just someone who stayed with the children and didn't um, take part in politics and revolution. Um, for my, my female colleagues, I see uh, also the difficulty that there still is a um, pay gap um, especially in, in when, when we look at readings that are paid in Germany, which is quite nice and which is something that is special for Germany because readings are paid quite well. Uh, but still, uh, the pay gap is quite big because there's not so much transparency on the one hand. And on the other hand, you cannot really compare a novel to another. Uh, if you have a writer who published eight books, but every book was not sold that much, and this writer is not as popular as someone who just published one book, uh, who will get paid better? Uh, I I couldn't say it clearly who who was the the better paid person. Um, and since in Germany we don't talk so much about money no one really knows what the other one gets and I just talked about uh, money and uh, paying with a friend who worked for a literature house so a house where readings are uh, take place um, and he told me that there's a huge difference between what women uh, say uh, what they want for for uh, for for pay and what what men expect. So it's not only that these institutions do pay uh, uh, pay pay more money to the to the uh, male authors, but it's also that a very successful female author uh, thinks in much smaller scales and thinks that this is the average what you get for a reading. So I think also there that could be uh, that could help some more transparency and some some more network and open network uh, women who talk about their payment and who talk about uh, how it uh, how difficult it can be to for example having a family being a writer and uh, maybe being even um, alone with children and. Yeah, to make ends meet, as, as you say, uh, to pay the rent, to pay uh, all the things that you need for everyday life. Um, these are like the more the things that I think could get better in in Germany in the literature scene. Um, but to talk about uh, my topics or to get a bit deeper. I think that in my novels, what interests me a lot is uh, politics and society, uh, and but also um, the emotional side of people, because that's what literature can do. They can get very deep into a person. They can give you an uh, inward perspective. And uh, I think that is uh, even better in literature than in any other uh, artistic uh, métier, like in a film, TV series, or maybe uh, paintings, uh, because you have these uh, protagonists in your mind. So they re you re recreate them in your mind, and that's something different to, to film or series 
you watch. Um, and in my work, I try to connect the uh, these emotional or personal problems and conflicts of the protagonist with a uh, larger larger conflicts. Uh, in my last novel, uh, that is called Schutzzone. Um, uh, it's, well, we, we had different uh, English titles. Uh, it's it's a it's a word from the military scene. Um, protection area, I think, would be the right translation into English, or protected area. Um, I tried to connect the emotional uh, conflicts of the protagonist Mira Weidner with the conflicts in her work. She works for the United Nations, and she has to deal with, on the one hand with bureaucracy that didn't get further, that stops and stops and stops. And you see the catastrophe of this world and uh, the United Nations at the, as the biggest institution for global politics are not able to, to be as fast as they have to be or as fast as the conflicts are. Um, on the other hand, she has to deal with uh, traumatic experiences. For example, in East Africa, where in 1994 in Rwanda, there was a, a huge and the biggest genocide after Second World War. And that is something that, of course, uh, traumatized the society. Uh, but before that, in Burundi, the neighbor country, there happened something that some also call a genocide. So it was a very, very brutal um, time in, in this area. And you still see the wounds that have been left by this uh, days and months and uh, years of instability and brutality. Um, so that is what what I try to do with my work, um, just to to get these very very huge topics together with smaller conflicts, so, so that you somehow get a uh, get a way to get close to it. Um, if if I, or in my opinion, if I just took these very huge catastrophes and conflicts um, that might would be too heavy to um, to get an emotional effect by the reader. Of course, an emotional uh, effect like horror or shock, but just to to let to let it get close to you, and and that's why I connect those. Um, maybe even banal or uh, simple problems of the protagonist that are mirrored or doubled in the huge conflicts that she, that she witnesses. At the moment, I'm writing about uh, the French Revolution and that brings me back to, to gender equality uh, because uh, as we, if we look, for example, at Olympe de Gouche, one of the uh, first feminists uh, who, who was a writer in, in the time of French Revolution, she already tried to be um, equal to men. And she was faced, or she was, uh, she had to face a lot of misogyny and uh, a lot of uh, ressentiment because uh, she wasn't what people expected. Uh, internet intellectual, uh, strong woman who wanted to be a well-known poet uh, and writer and uh, someone who works for the theater and someone who also not only works for the theater but takes political topics. That wasn't what the French Revolution wanted. It was a revolution that changed society fundamentally but let the gender or the, the the role of man and woman quite the same as it was before or even worse that's what some say it's um it was before that a woman didn't have have the same rights but she was she still had a better opportunity to interact uh but anyway it was it, it's quite interesting that we have maybe the most important change of society that was uh, that started by a, by a s civil society movement 
uh, that still let the roles of man and woman more or less the same and it became the revolution of man and Lim de Gouch, for example she published after the um, after uh, in 1791 uh, the rights uh, not only of humans but of women because uh, what was published before uh, the um, uh, so the uh, human rights uh, that were published by, by French revolutionaries were only looking at the rights of man, uh, which what we forget quite often when we celebrate those great rights that are great rights, but at that time it was only working for half of the society. Um, so that is something that I think is uh, quite interesting to look at especially from our times now because I think that we very often forget how far uh, some women or some person went long before our times but uh, what uh, powers stopped them and uh, got a roll back or put the society back to its normal as you can say. Just to give you um, some some idea of my working routine, it's quite um, not revolutionary but uh, normal. <laughs> I work like a, maybe like a bureaucrat. I stand, I get up, and start to write at eight o'clock. Then I do my um, morning routine. I drink a lot of coffee and uh, write and read. Have my um, my midday break uh, and then I work again. So it's quite a normal, more or less nine to five job, although I sometimes work after five. <laughs> um, so that's not that exciting, uh, as I said, but uh, I think that the exciting thing about my job is that I can read whatever I want, that I can get deeper and deeper into topics and that I have the freedom uh, to uh, to extend my research as much as I want. Uh, and that is really some something that I think is great and wonderful and also a privilege, I have to say. Uh, it's something that, um, of course, I had to achieve. It was not... Uh, when, I, when I wrote my first novel, I had, well, I didn't have, have enough money to to do a lot of research uh, and to take my time. I had to be finished by some some day. So um, that's something, some some privileges that came by by that that got bigger by every book I published. Um, if I just would finish with with some advice for uh, young writers. Um, be critical to yourself, but also be uh, self confident. I think that is the most important thing. Take your, yourself serious, and imagine yourself as a writer. Not that you shouldn't like sit in a cafe and think, oh, well, if I would be a writer, then uh, I would sit here. How wonderful if I was uh, Sartre or Simone de Beauvoir. Um, that's quite chic. Uh, but in your work, just imagine yourself, you would already write for an audience. You would already um, write to achieve something and that you have readers and you have all, also um, like the maybe also the the not only the strength but also the responsibility that what you write will reach people and that it's not just a monologue you have with yourself but with an audience so i think that is something that can make you stronger and also critical uh, about what you write and sensitive of course uh, and the the other uh, suggestion is that uh, you should always read a lot because that's where you learn how to write and not only from your own fantasy but also from the texts from the literature from the stories 
that are all already there and from the great tradition that we have in literature and be curious with reading. So um, that was my uh, small uh, introduction and um, recommendation um, for, yeah, for young female writers maybe, but also of course for male writers. Thank you so much.